A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, other as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. Fair Fair boom domini.
Dominus Vobiscum. Et cum Spiritu Tuo. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matheum. Gloria Tibi Domine. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Verbum Domini, My dear brothers and sisters, today the church celebrates the feast of St. Matthew, apostle and evangelist. In today's gospel reading, according to Matthew, Matthew is mystifying. Hearing the words of Jesus, he immediately left his custom post and followed the Lord. We may ask why? Why leave power and money you know, and prestige? The answer is the power of the word. According to the letter to the Hebrews, Quote, the word of God is effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrates even between the soul and the spirit, and able to discern the thoughts of the heart. And the effectiveness of the word of God is seen in our gospel today. St. Matthew was sitting at his customs post, as he normally did. We can just imagine the grumbling of some people as they pay their taxes. Was it like 30% taxes, you know? And perhaps an occasional slur toward him. A traitor, a Jew, conniving with the Romans. Matthew may have become too accustomed to this, he might have grown numb already. Then all of a sudden, here is Jesus, and the word of God tears into his world. Akolothai moi, follow me. Two simple words, follow me. Yet they were so sharp, so penetrating. The word of God got through Matthew's hardened heart and revived his numb spirit, giving him a new zest for life. That the gospel says he got up and followed Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is a living example 
of the power of the word. Pope Francis, as we know, traces his vocation story to this gospel episode, exactly this gospel. He tells that in his biography, The Call of Matthew, to this misencounter between the miserable and despised tax collector and the God of mercy and compassion. That's why we can understand the motto of Pope Francis, Miserando at que illegendo. Miserando, like a miserable sinner. Yet illegendo, yet chosen or elected. That's what he means. God speaks his word to us, not because we are worthy, but purely out of his tremendous mercy and compassion. Again, we appreciate you know, the year of mercy that the Pope has decreed. My dear brothers and sisters, this experience of St. Matthew and of Pope Francis is what the Pope means in his homily when he came to our country in January in Manila Cathedral, January 16. Before priests and religious, that day he said, we should need to experience daily the conversion to the newness of the gospel, of the word of God. And this call to conversion is applicable to all, not just to priests and religious, to all of us. The word of man is represented by the words of the scribes and the Pharisees in the gospel. Why does he eat? with tax collectors and sinners. Such words express insecurity, envy, anger, close-mindedness. Sometimes these words can come from us, why him, why her, not me? Or sometimes, why me, Lord? You know my deepest and darkest sin, Yet, why have you called me? Yet, these moments also become the occasion for Jesus to declare very clearly why. Why he does eat with tax collectors and sinners. And he says, the healthy do not need a doctor, but sick people do. I did not come to call the virtuous but sinners. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, this is an invitation for all of us. First, to stay in our customs post, that is, wherever God has placed us today. Second, let us allow God to speak his word to us, to address us in our present situation. Just take note even, but in perhaps we might say above all in the liturgy. When we listen to the readings, at the end of the first reading, even if it was St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, we say, Verbum Domini, the word of the Lord. At the end of the gospel, even if it is according to Matthew, we say, the gospel of the Lord. It is the Lord who speaks to us. And finally, let us listen to the word of God, allowing it to, quote, cut us, slip through where the soul is divided from spirit or joints from the marrow to our most secret emotions and thoughts and desires. In the words of Pope Francis, Allow the word of God to shake our complacency, our fear of change, our petty compromises with the ways of the world, our spiritual worldliness, and what? Let us allow the word of God to pierce through our hardened hearts so that in the end, like Matthew, who shared his encounter with Jesus through the writing of the gospel, 
we too can share our joyful encounters with the Lord as Christian lovers to everyone. Thus, our presence in the world becomes a present, a gift to all around us. Amen.